Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. That is Jack in studio, in person. Conrad, this is the 45 Loud Wrong edition. We are going to look back at our top six and bottom six predictions as we saw them the beginning of the year. Uh, it it uh, didn't go well for us. Starting at the bottom of the table, we both had directionally accurate. We both had Fulham in the 20th spot. Yes. We all know that ended up being uh, the season-long domain of Blades, Sheffield yes. United. Sorry, were they, Phil. Were they, were they at any point ever not dead bottom? I don't think so. Maybe like week they one, didn't two. didn't win the first 11, 11 weeks. That's true, actually. I don't think about it. I mean, it could have been on alphabet, on alphabet or on, uh, yeah. on goals conceded or goal difference. It was, I mean, a tough season for both these teams on screen. Fulham are going to be in their correct position in a few slots, but um, we were correct in the team, obviously, going and getting relegated. Um, a bit harsh on saying that they were the, the worst side in the league. That's the only regret I really have with this pick. Um, they showed a lot. I think Scott Parker, I'm unsure if he's declared his future as at Fulham or not. I think he's a very good manager. He could definitely get them back up. Um, and Fulham, I think, are in a club that are going to want to get back up. They have they have the talent. They can hold on to it. Yeah, they have aspirations for the, top, for the top flight. But can they get back there next year? Probably depends on if they can keep Parker and some of their talent. Maybe bring in some, but we know how tough that is in this day and age. So Fulham... Did finish 18th, as you mentioned. Uh, this is yeah. filed under <laughs> yeah. blind squirrel finds a nut every now and yeah. again. Uh, West Brom did, in fact, finish Oops, finish uh, 19th. Uh, Big Sam stepping down, looking, saying it needs a younger manager, somebody that's got some enthusiasm, meaning he just doesn't have it in him to yeah. go through a championship season, I mean, which I can't blame him. There wasn't enough talent. They brought Dean Ghana. I believe it was back from – he loaned the year prior. They brought Pereira back after loaning in the year prior. They maintained their championship squad. We said, yeah, that's a good thing. Didn't they have Jack Yelka they start, in the center back? Uh, that, that's Sheffield United, isn't it? Maybe. I think it was West Brom. Um, we should know. But they started with Billich, didn't they? Yes. They started with Billich. No so this was Billich. a vote and not confidence in Billich and, ultimately is what it was. Yeah. Um, had it been Allardyce over an entire season, probably would have survived actually, I think. Maybe. They weren't in the top 10 in the final 10 matches of the season as we look back in the last episode. Check that one out and subscribe for insights like that. Yes. Stop the video here if you want good takes. And just come back in like 10 minutes no, don't when do the, that. When Stay. the video is over. Subscribe. It's free. But when you show them this. This was the worst. Uh, Crystal Palace only slightly. Uh, they ended up 14th, so not terrible. Obviously, Fulham did take this 18th spot. Uh, the West Ham is loud wrong. Uh, probably the loudest of the wrong. Negative 12 spots. One. Negative 12 spots. Like, they really overperformed what I expected. And I mean, actually, in my defense, a lot of people had them at this spot at this point. Right, at this point. At the beginning of the season. Um, but they got their act together. I mean, Declan Rice went to another level. Suchek hit the ground running. Kufal was tremendous. Um, there really wasn't many er areas of their squad which were poor. Um, and David Moyes was doing a tremendous job. He's a great job. Sixth place is a tremendous season for West Ham. So their fans, I don't think they'd really be mad at me. They're in Europe next year, so like they don't really care what this American thinks of them. Um, it, it was a very slanderous thing to say 18th, um, but I'm not going to let you escape from the criticism of, of West Ham. because Palace was, was bad. Like They were better than I expected them to be. They have a lot of talent, I think, and their talent was, never could was, get it was concentrated in good areas. Zaha and Etse and Benteke towards the latter parts of the season yeah. means that I think next year, if they maintain that trio, um, they'll be able to score goals. And I think you don't want to point at leads and say if you score goals, you'll survive. But if you score goals versus just trying not to lose, it'll... And then you could always say Norwich are the classic example of let's go out fighting, and then they went out last. So it couldn't always work, but there was a nice mixture. So they're an interesting one for next year, though. Hodgson leaving. I'm interested. What are they going to do? How much are they going to turn over? You know? A lot of players out of contract. Yeah, a lot of players out of contract for them. So interesting uh, summer for them. 17th makes me only slightly less loud wrong. I had West Ham United not getting relegated, but certainly not in the top six, which is where they ended up. Not a lot of faith in Villa from you. No. Yeah, I um, they finished in seventeenth the year prior. I probably said the same thing. I was like, well, they they're gonna finish seventeenth this year, but it was Burnley. Um, a side that I didn't even have in my bottom six. I thought they were a bit better. I probably had we didn't do between spaces fourteen and seven. Um, so I pr I probably would have slotted Burnley into that. Um, some probably in the, in the Villa spot around eleven, but they ended up inverting each other. So obviously, I was very loudly wrong. 
Uh, 16th, I had Villa here. Uh, also, Loud Wrong, Palace. Neither one of us had a lot of faith in yeah. West Ham and Palace. Um, I was closer with Palace. There's only two off. But Brighton, again, another side neither of us saw coming. Neither one of us had in the bottom six. You know, Because the strength of the, the performance of the year prior, they were quite good. And the, right? the performances this year were, were very good. They're, they're XGs. I love that stat. But they... they oftentimes had very strong expected goals and underperformed it. They didn't always outperform their opponents. They were pretty open at the back. Um, I wouldn't even say actually pretty open because they had three very good center backs who were up for contention for the Euros, and it was Ben White who got selected, which was a bit of a surprise, but probably because he's the youngest. Um, so like they survived for Brighton, so not a bad season. All three of these teams survived, so none of them will be very upset. Um, Villa had a, a great season. Yeah. Jack Grealish, when he was healthy, was the catalyst for this team. They did have some additional transfers in that help them but are they going to be a top half team next year very likely i i mean i would say out of teams this year it goes west ham one then villa two in terms of who had the best year compared to where they were expected to um because you got to put leads in there somewhere i don't think leads because i think a lot of people saw them at mid table level like yeah top half is pretty good for a newly promoted side and they had a lot of points um but, I mean, and they were somewhat floated in the relegation talks, but Villa were relegation threatened last year, as were West Ham, and they turned it around completely. So, you sure about that Leeds prediction? Fifteen? Uh, uh, <laughs> Again, I was off only by two here with my Burnley pick. Uh, this is pretty loud wrong, not as bad as our, either of our West Ham picks. But, um, yeah. yeah, and this ended up obviously being the, the home of Southampton. And, and actually, if you had even thought about it, um, like like prior to – like maybe halfway through the season, you would not expect them to be here because they were top at one point. I mentioned, every, I, I think yeah. I, I'm like stop the one, count. one trick pony with the stop the count tweet that I always mention every time. Um, I think I go back and forth on Southampton because I think Hassan Hoodle is a good manager. I wonder, I don't know. It's always tough with these with these sides who don't have the biggest budgets and they struggle with inconsistencies. They lose their players to top sides. Um, yeah. Mostly to Liverpool, especially <laughs> Southampton. <laughs> Good season, I think, for for two of these teams. Mm. Average season for Southampton because of the great highs and the bad lows and in the season. Great season for Leeds. And then... I think Burnley just... They, they're not investing in the club, right? So Daesh is yeah. really an, irritated by that. And there may just be fatigue from hearing that same voice yeah. for the we, last four we, or five years. We talk about that, that concept a lot. I think that was really apparent this year. So, you know, honestly, it could have been worse. We had two sides correctly called getting relegated, so... So what I do notice here is we have bias against clubs with shields in their crests. Like five of six of each of us are yeah. shielded crests, yeah, yeah. which is strange. I don't know why that is. Maybe, I don't know if that's a reflection on us or a reflection on the clubs or what we think about those clubs. But I did have three of the bottom six correct. We obviously had the exacta or the, 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 the exacto with the, the West Brown pick in 19th. This is almost a case of um, if you finish 18th, 19th, or 20th, like does it really matter? Um, so I'll I'll take the two points with Fulham getting relegated and West Brom getting relegated. So I will take that. Got and two of the three. Not bad. We the other were, were just really bad. Yeah, we will ignore the West Ham ones. But Leeds, I mean, Leeds at 15 is not a terrible pick. You know, I think I had them like 11th or 12th in mid-table. I don't recall. We had the full table, which didn't publicize it last year. But, you know, ultimately, where did I have Leeds? You had Leeds 11th. Okay, so I thought. I had Burnley 13th. Not bad. So now we will take a look at the top six of the table, starting in the sixth place position. Not a lot of confidence in these London clubs, Spurs and Arsenal from either of us, and they both underperformed our <laughs> underperforming perspective. Uh, yeah. Spurs ended up obviously in the seventh spot, Arsenal in eighth. Uh, this was the dominion of, of West Ham. They were in the top four yeah. most of the season. Um, but, you know, Spurs in seven and Arsenal in eight, reflected i think our lack of confidence well them. we picked all big six sides for our pretty for chalky our, for our top top sixes um so we didn't expect two to jump in so obviously when west ham and leicester broke up the super league party um <laughs> then that was always gonna mess up some predictions um some really badly for me the team on the left does not appear for a little while for me unfortunately um arsenal um Finishing eighth was a kind reflection on their season. That they they, they finished almost, strong. They five almost in qualifying a row. for Europe was not a reflection on the season as a whole. It was a bad season. Um, considering we're recording this right after the departures of Zidane from Madrid and Conte from Inter. And talk of Pochettino going back yeah, to 
Spurs. Bo- both of these sides, I think, could be interested in managers. Definitely Spurs, because I mean Ryan Mason's like a kid. He's like yeah, basically my he's basically my age. Yeah. Um, and then Arsenal, Arteta, they, they think they're confident in him. But if you're confident in him, give him some friggin' money. Like he needs money to work with. But that being said, West Ham, they took their players, used them better, got more points, better season. Fifth, uh, I had Arsenal here again. Not a great reflection on them. Uh, United in fifth. I didn't have United very high either, as we'll see here coming up. But, um, you know, obviously this was where Leicester fell to. Uh, to we talked about it in the, in the season wrap-up. Check it out. Uh, or in the final day wrap-up, I yeah. should say. Um, Leicester, 93% of the last two seasons in the top four, only to fade in the last yeah. 10 matches of the season. Injuries haven't helped them either year, but fundamentally um, – you worry about the mentality because you, you, you are so long in the driver's seat only to fall off when it's in your hands. It's it's frustrating for them. So I think a bit of a credit goes to them for making fifth place an upsetting finish. That shows a great turn yeah. in fortunes by Brendan Rodgers and them. Um, Smart investment in players. Manchester United, obviously a far better season than I had them pegged for. Arsenal, a far worse season than you had them pegged for. Um, but fundamentally, I think that there's not much – distinction between the Manchester United side and the Leicester side because it's like you could say that about two through six yeah. and maybe seven and eight including Spurs and Arsenal if they, they can get good manager situations the, or investment the amount of injuries for sides like Leicester for Liverpool um, for teams like Palace as well and, and the no fans for 98% of the season really made it a tough year to call. That's why we kind of defaulted to, to the... Man United undefeated away, which... They you know, were. Yeah, first, first time ever. For the third, I think third team in history to be undefeated away. So, um, great season for them in terms of placement. We'll talk about Ole in a more de- detailed view in a later video because I think there's a lot to talk about after their Europa League final loss. Um, but I think next year, I don't want to say it's an open field because I think... We'll get into it in a second, but I think it's going to be interesting where these sides go going into next year. Fourth, I had United. You had Chelsea, um, and obviously this is this is where Chelsea ended up. Got an exacto on that one. Nice job, which is interesting. And I'll, I've got, che- I had Chelsea in third. But mm-hmm. is do you think that was confidence in Lampard or confidence in the quality of the club and the uh, transfer activity? Transfer activity, hundred percent. I mean, we all knew. Like, same with with per- Pirlo for uh, for Juventus. Juventus. We're, we're like maybe some even to an extent. Not not necessarily Ole because he had experience before Man United, but like this Arteta, guy, you know, only only reason he has this job is because he used to play for the club. He understands the culture. He does all these things. But Lampard was not tactically able to utilize their talent. Tuchel has been to to, to an extent defensively for sure. Havertz and Werner, I think, are still underperforming because they are Maybe unbelievably good players. Maybe they're busts in the Premier League. They're, they're too young. I think. I think Werner. There, people always make fun of the quote where he's like, "Their defenders are so big here in the Premier League." And it's like, he's going to turn good. Havertz is going to turn good. I had Havertz as my young player of the year, so he better turn good. Um, they have a lot of talent, um, and I think f- I predicted fourth because it was a, a, a give and take between the tactical ineptness of Lampard and the sheer quality of the signings and at the club. And obviously, that mixture only came as a result of Tuchel dragging them up. From when he got them in like ninth and place, like five straight clean sheets when he came in. Yeah, he did a tremendous job cleaning the club up. But um, proud of the fourth place prediction, but the way I got there was a little shaky. Well, I think was, the strength of the side is clear, right? I mean, so I did have Chelsea here. This is a bit more loud wrong with Spurs in third. Yeah, and somebody had their manager of the season candidate. Um, no, nah, not candidate. My manager of the season pick was Jose Mourinho, and I mean, you know what? In that sense, I, I. I um, stand by what I said almost. It's like I believed in Mourinho. I, wouldn't. I believed in Mourinho to turn it around. Um, I think he probably needed more signings to justify that. He turned that. it around for like seven weeks. Yeah, I think I needed more. Yeah, they were great at the beginning of the year, and I was feeling this tremendous is about this Mourinho, call. Though, right? And so, but the team faded out. I think they needed more recruitment, more signings, and they ended up firing Mourinho about a week before a cup final, which upset me a lot. Um, but the team here, I think, was also very surprising in another sense that. We viewed this league as a two-horse race between Liverpool and Man City, and Liverpool decided I was to finish in third, which is crap to the pet. And, I mean, is it their fault? I mean, they had, like, th- their best three center backs were out for, like, literally 20-plus games. 16 center back pairings. Yeah, that is not Ridiculous. a title sustainable season. So third <clears throat> is, I think it goes Klopp winning the Premier League, 
Klopp winning the Champions League, Klopp finishing third in 2020-2021. In Tremendous season for Liverpool with the context of the injuries. Um, and I, I, I always say there's no, there can be no hangover in the next season. You go into next year in Champions League football with players potentially Hopefully fit. Hopefully healthy. And you can just kind of say, all right, we can forget about next season. There's no lasting effects. And we can just focus on the next season in a very fresh sense. Spurs in third wouldn't have been if they just didn't fire Mourinho. That's all I'll say. If they didn't fire Mourinho, they would have gotten the act together. They would have made a title charge in the last two months. Bad. It was a bad call. Well, we both had Liverpool in second place. They both we, they finished third. Obviously, we talked about the injuries. Um, I had Virgil Van Dyke as my Player of the Year. That was done in the f- what fourth game of the season, yeah, third game like that. of the season against Everton. Um, but again, to withstand the injuries they did, to your point, and still finish top three is pretty remarkable. And winning the most points from the final ten matches, yeah. they got twenty six of the thirty on offer, which yes. is pretty crazy. United just overperformed or just took a lot, took advantage of everybody else being not so good so it's hard to say is man united that good or is everybody else they just a a byproduct of a of a mediocre top six if man united again we'll get into this in deeper detail later if man united had a board with the stones to fire a club favorite a club legend even though he hasn't been failing for you he has improved for you finishing six his first season finishing third last season finishing second this season getting you to finals, getting you in the discussion for trophies. He hasn't won a trophy. He hasn't gotten the ball over the line yet. Um, but he's done a, a good job of moving Man United forward. But I, I, I question that as well because they're open at the back despite spending a lot of money on fixing their defense. They have a lot more questions now than they do answers compared to when he, he took over. Um, so it may be time for Ole to be moved on for a Zidane or a Conte because if Manchester United... Uh, Conte's not coming back to the Premier League. If Manchester United go to Conte and say, we'll back you, come manage for us, he could get them to almost title-winning level if they make a few signings. A right winger, a defensive midfielder, and a center back. And Conte is your manager. And Man United might be my title favorites. Almost. Because it would be an injection see, into yeah. that club. But depends Liverpool, what other people are going to do, I think, is what's going to be more predicting their Liverpool success. Liverpool finishing. So, Kanate is practically done for Liverpool. Virgil van Dijk returning for Liverpool is just going to reform their ability to play out from the back and play a high line. So, I want to allow you to play Fabinho in the right spot all season yes. long. Fabinho playing defensive mid is such a huge deal. Best defensive midfielder in the world, in my allow eyes. Allow Thiago to roam free and yes. do what he does from a creativity so perspective. Liverpool, no one all them. Be yeah. interesting. Liverpool are my current favorites for the title next season. Um, depending on what happens for City in the Champions League, because that will always be the the twinge, where if they don't win it this year against Chelsea, it's like, well, now they really got to kind of win it next year. Um, so a lot of, it's going to rely on the next few months of transfers, and I think it would be harsh on Ole to get fired after finishing second and having you in the brief discussion of a title race and getting you to a final, a European final. It'd be harsh. And an FA Cup final. But I think it'd be justified. Losing two finals in one season. Yeah, or, or getting to no, two no, finals. You got... You got I think he lost to Leicester because it was Leicester Chelsea. Oh, you're right, 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 right. My Lo- bad. They, semi- got, they had semi- another final. So semifinals in the Carabao yeah. Cup, semifinals in the FA My Cup, yeah. and eliminated in the group stage of the Champions League. So we got another exacto. Both of us had City winning the league. City clearly won the league, um, and I think that's. And you know what? Down to the Ruben Diaz move and just them being so defensively strong Hang and on. having faith in Pep Guardiola to. Keep bounce back. They won three of the last four titles. Keep, I mean, keep it, talking. It's keep been, talking. They've been outrageous. We, you know, you had Sterling as your young player or your player of the year. He didn't quite get to where we thought he might get to this year. That was a, that was a terrible decision. Hey, don't, don't don't paint that as anything other than a terrible decision. So hang on, I'm trying to figure out but what De Bruyne was hurt for a lot. They okay. overcame a lot. They had a terrible no, no, start no. to the season. Let's say something really quick. So I just checked the receipts. We made this prediction on September 11th. Not like today has any significance, but. That was when we released our top six prediction video. Ruben Diaz's transfer was September 29th. It was three oh, weeks later. after. So we made this decision without knowing about the Diaz. Or, well, that's like a week and a half later. Yeah. Two weeks later. Two weeks later. Two and a half weeks later. There we go. I think there was a rumor about it. There was a rumor that they were going to sign a center back. I, I, I didn't watch back the video. It was Koulibaly we all thought he was gonna, yes, they were going to end up yes. with. Yes. We, we, we yeah. said this without the guarantee of a center back signing. So, so well well done. We are geniuses. For I was going to give us credit for the for the Diaz thing. I think actually what we thought about more than anyone else was this is a condensed season. It, it We were doing these predictions in yeah. September. We said it's going to finish the same time but start much later. That's going to benefit sides who are deep. And they got a, they had a, a, a late start because they had an extra week 
and off they because a, of how deep they went in Europe. And they had a tremendous amount of depth. I mean, Cancelo isn't even going to start potentially in the Champions League final, and he's been one of the best right backs in the world this season. So they have so much depth, and that's not a knock on them. That's tremendous recruiting and their ability. It's a lot of investment. To, to, yeah, a lot of investment. And Pep Guardiola just wins wherever he goes. Exactly. Granted, he's got always a lot of investment. Follows where he goes. You but, know, but the, and I put I, him in Stoke on a rainy I Tuesday. Don't, I don't remember who said it. The reason he. It's harsh to blame him for the investment because teams can trust him with that investment. That's such a hard thing yeah. to do because you want a return on it. With Pep Guardiola, you give him the amount of money they've spent. He will win you three Premier League titles and maybe Four win years. you a Champions yeah. League title. So massive credit to City and massive credit to us for being able to, to see that happening. Um, we trusted, I think, Guardiola. I think we said to ourselves, Liverpool will fall off. They're not going to have the same motivation. And you know what? That was true. They fell off. They did not have the same mentality, monster motivation. Um, they, they had a bit of it. They were top at Christmas, and they got punched even further when, like, Massive yeah. went out. Um, and, and, and 16 different center back pairings. That, yeah. that just is uh, that's and, stunning. And Ben Davies, when, after signing him, got hurt. Kabak got hurt at the end of the season. I'm sad to see him not return. I, I liked Kabak at Liverpool, but I think that it's just a, a victim of the of the pandemic. That yeah. He was an emergency stopgap sign, and unfortunately he won't make a return, I guess. So I'm proud of uh, having two spot-ons, and we're just going to ignore my spur- <laughs> third as a result. Well, we both had four of the top six. I had the right top four, obviously out of order, but so that's a total of seven ish correct of the of the top. You had six correct of the top and the bottom. That is, I'll read, I'll read some of the other calls we had. Uh, you had Wolves in seventh. I had Leicester in seventh. Uh, Wolves in seventh was bad. I, I actually we had them inverted. You had Leicester, Leicester in eighth. I had Wolves in eighth. So right. those were both bad. We both had Everton in ninth, and they finished tenth. Yeah. So. Not a lot of faith. But I like Ancelotti and what he's doing. I yeah. just don't have faith in that squad right now. I had Sheffield United in 10th. You had oh, I had him in like 13th. You had Newcastle in 10th. You had Sheffield 14th. You had Leeds 11th, which is spot on. No, they were 9th. They were 9th. Yeah. You're correct. Sorry. I had Southampton there. But other than that, Newcastle, um, I had them in 12th. Um, Burnley, Brighton in 13th. Burnley, Brighton. So I don't know what our shield, I don't know what to do about this shield bias. I've understood, I found a, some. Prejudice against shields. You have in honestly. This squad. I don't I understand need, it. You need to think about that. I think well, it's not just me; it's you. Well, both of us had five of six bottom half. We need to bottom think about six that. in the yeah. with shields. You know, honestly understand. though, I think I'm excited for next season because there's a lot to build off of, um, and I think it's going to be open, man. I think it's, this year was the year to be open. We got two non-top yeah, six, non-big six clubs. But there's also the so six. much potential for said It's going to be tough for them to repeat. Liverpool are going to want to get back on top, but there's just so many variables. You know, there's there's less certainty. In I think the problem that Liverpool has is their ability to score. I think the the City don't have that problem. If they end up with that, who's the rumored striker going to? Uh, if Harry Kane ends up at City, oh, good, that, uh, okay, then then, then that's a it. determined. That's like oh, okay, this is this is finito. That'll do it for us for uh, our look. Uh, loud wrong. Top six and bottom six for the 2020-2021 season. Jack, Conrad, this has been the Footy Five. Please let us know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe. It's free. Occasionally we get stuff right. Mostly we're just entertaining. Uh, Look for us on the Twitter at the Footy Five. Take care now.